Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York City, yes, it is I. I am Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go down to Florida, the state that Trump loves. <laughs> yeah. Because the only it state, sure right, does. the only state right now that's loving him back, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> and you see it everywhere. And the name you see under her picture is Lori Thompson. Yay! Hello, 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 Lori. How are you, dear? I thought you I'm were, doing you, well. Yeah, you you were supposed to do a thing with us last week, and you right. couldn't because I don't have the picture here. I should show it. It looks you look so <laughs> pathetic in that picture. Don't I? Yeah, man. Well, what, and I tell, heard tell, that, tell them what happened. I because I didn't. I don't know what happened exactly. So it was a scratch, a deep scratch on the cornea. Well, how did that I happen? Really, how did that happen? Well, I think it was. I think I might have done it. Sometimes, if you put a contact lens in that has like a divot, like a piece of it out, you oh. don't notice, right? Because you just take, you know, you open your contact case, you put your contact in, you don't really examine it then, every time. But do you wear think do you do you wear contacts? I do. Oh, uh-huh. okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't start wearing them until like 2008. Oh, really? And it's sheer yeah. vanity, you know. I there was a place I would go where they had this really nice woman, um, and then I saw her once with glasses, and she looked like 20 years older. Well, that, so you, thought, sh- you shouldn't worry I'm, about it. The glasses don't make you look older, do they? Yeah, <laughs> this, is how, this is how Chuck Schumer wears them all the time, you know. Yeah, and it's that affectation people have that makes them, you know, look more inquisitive, I guess, where they wear them about half at the bridge right here. Yeah, and then they kind of look over them like I they're just, authoritative. I just, put, I just put on the glasses, and my vision is blurrier than it is when. It, yeah, today my vision is clear, clearer than it cool. usually is. Yeah, Yay. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes I have a pair of glasses, like rebating glasses for reading, yeah. and sometimes I'll have the contacts in and forget that I have the contacts in and put the glasses on. It's like, whoa! So, so you, <laughs> the, you you cut the cornea on your on your contacts? You think? No, yeah, because if this divot, it can get ragged, and then it really is irritative, and then sometimes you make an opportunity for a tear. And I'd heard that. A friend of mine had a T-shirt cannon. He worked for a station, and they were shooting T-shirts out of the crowd, and a T-shirt hit him, albeit from a T-shirt cannon, and it gave him a corneal scratch. I don't know. You know with, I, wait a minute. With a T-shirt? Yeah. I, I, find that, I find that hard to believe. I did, too, but it was something about the impact, and it might have... The weirdest things can cause corneal scratches. Really? I learned all this. Huh. Yeah. Did I ever scratch? They, did I ever, ever scratch my cornea? I, no, it itched once, so I scratched it. But, uh. <laughs> no, I, I don't think I've ever had a cornea scratch. I've, I've had a lot of things, but that I never had. I had a. I'll tell you what I had once. It was, I had I, my. I got uh, pink eye. Oh, that's the worst. But that's... it got worse and worse and worse, and I. I wasn't going to go see a doctor about it. I was here in New York, and I wasn't going to go see a doctor about it because I went, uh, it'll clear it itself up, you know, and it just got worse and worse. And finally, one day, I'm walking down the street, and there's a little kid walking down the street, and I bump into him because I can't see him. Because yeah. the eye is yeah. so infected. I think it was both eyes, actually. Yeah, that so, can often happen. You know how they, they cure that? Boom, like that. Drops? Um, uh, what is it? What kind of acid? Nitric acid, some kind of acid. And, and they, it just they, clears it right up? Right. You don't feel it because they d- dull the eyeball. When they dull the eyeball, they can do anything to it. I mean, I've had uh, you know, my eye operated on and the lens removed and a new one put in and all of that, you know. 
And uh, uh, it just never, it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt because they just can dull the whole thing. So they just dulled the whole thing and poured in this this uh, sulfuric acid or whatever they use. And I could acid feel I could feel it bubbling around, you know. And uh, that got rid of the pink eye. Boom, killed it. That's you know. very cool because pink eye I've had before and it starts in one eye and quickly moves to both eyes. Yeah. And my grandma was generation and this is she was from the south she was raised in kentucky and they used to say if you got pink eye you were you've been peeing in the road urinating in the road and it is caused by bacteria that kind of you know uh, defecation bacteria um but that's so that was the the you know the myth that they always tease people with what do you, you mean pee I'm, I'm, I'm peeing in the road is that what they're saying yeah, because that would indicate that you were kind of peeing from duress or you didn't have toilet paper and all the accoutrements of a good solid pee. So that's that was just well, the way there's, there's another urban myth. Yeah. But yeah. no, no, no. We, there's a little germ of truth to it. Yeah. Because, yeah, because it is caused by. You know, biological. Well, but I don't want people to think that you know. I, I when I got pink eye, I got it from peeing in the road, because I was living. No. I was living in New York City. And we don't have roads here. <laughs> no, we, we have streets. Not, not public bathrooms. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, we can, but, well, it, you can get it. A lot of people, a lot of mothers, get it from children and diaper changing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how I got it, but I noticed these little kids that I were around. They're the couriers. They're the pink eye villains. Yeah. Um, children carry it like it can run like wildfire through a daycare or a child center. Yeah, kindergarten. That's interesting. It, That's interesting. It's highly contagious. Yeah. yeah. There's something ringing. In my ear. Uh, it might be a bird. We got a noise. Oh, one. you know that's what it is. I bet. Yeah. Is there a noisy America's bird? America's got talent, and it's right here in yeah, well, Florida. Well, be quiet a second. Oh, there it is. The just chirp. I, yeah. wonder, I wonder what that was. Was I thought you maybe had some jewelry on or something, you know? Yeah. Birds. I don't wear noisy jewelry in case I ever want to, you know, do it like a, a B and E, a breaking and entering. You give yourself away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Instantly. So so anyway, so you uh, you you went to the doctor, I suppose, with the cornea problem, right? Oh yeah, I went to the GP, and he gave me some drops, and I went to the optometrist. And she did a procedure. I don't know what it was. It was in office, but it was some kind of procedure. And uh, I don't know, surgery would be, I think, too strong a word. And they have involved some suturing. But uh, then then it started to feel much better after that. But it was weird because your depth perception with one eye covered is completely oh, forget, thrown off. Forget going to 3D movies, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, why am I here? Why did I pay extra for this? Yeah, exactly. But it, it, and that affects a lot of things, you know, the the depth of field, um, it, especially around the kitchen. You know, yeah. just pouring the eight juice can become a challenge. Yeah, that, I, I didn't think about that, but if I covered one eye all day, it would be difficult to do certain things because you're used to using depth perception to hone, yeah. hone in on it. making my hands go like this. I do it by depth perception. Yeah, exactly. If I do it with one so eye, it, it, it's probably a lot. <laughs> yeah. It affects your day quite a lot. So, uh, you know, watching TV kind of gave, gives you a headache. But um, so I just kind of chilled. And it, it, got, it got better quickly. I had to say it healed pretty it, quickly. Is your husband a good nurse on these things? I Very. Mean, very. He learned to do the eye cover thing like a champ. And I if mean, he and I saw the eye cover, and if you uh, uh, don't need, you can save that eye cover just in case somebody shoots you in the ear. You oh, know. good. And, and, and so you, good to know. Yeah. Did you see that <laughs> that, that ear tampon that Trump was wearing? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Either that he think he's auditioning for the next Tarantino movie. Yes. Exactly. But. Exactly. <laughs> So I mean, yeah. That, yeah, that's terrible. What happened to you? That's, that's it was. Yeah. It was very rough, I must say. Um, it, then you get bummed out because you know you're. It's a it's a constant pain. It's not like an ache. It's a piercing constant pain. Yeah, well, mine yeah. was probably various types of corneal pain, 
But uh, yeah, it was, I'm glad it's behind me. And you're how old now? I am, I have to think, 64. 64 years old. Okay. 64 years young. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> next year you get uh, to cash in some of that Social Security, don't you? I think. Yeah. 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 And uh, you also get Medicare, I think, uh, at that time. You know. Yeah. I think you can wait until you're 67. It's not mandatory. Uh, but is, is your husband older than you or younger? He is. He's, he's older. six years old. So he's... So he knows all about the, the, you know, the Medicare and stuff like that, right? Right. Yeah. He's already done that Medicare gauntlet. And yeah. you can get, you know, you have to get a, what is it? A, yeah. You can get, he knows all about it. For a couple it, of years, is, for the first year or so, you kind of want to deny it, you know? Yeah. What I did, yeah. What I did in denying that I was getting older, I think in, the, in San Francisco, in the Bay Area, if you reach 60, you could get into the movies for a uh, senior charge, right? Well, that's an incentive. And I took, I, I, I always paid full price because I didn't want to admit to anybody that I was that old. That yeah. I, you know, and then, it's hard. Uh, especially when I had a girlfriend who was like, you know, 20. Uh, so that, <laughs> that didn't yeah. look very good, you know. Uh, and, uh, uh, so I was very quiet about it for a while, and uh, then one day I just said, "Ah, screw it! I'll I'll tell him I'm a senior and get in cheap." And yeah. you know, nobody. I expect that if I said, "Okay, give me one senior, please," they would go show us some identification. No, <laughs> no, they did not. You know. No. You know that. And, that, that you know, nice. and uh, what the flip side of that is, if they say. And that's with a senior discount, or you just look at your ticket without mm -hmm. asking you. They've given you the senior discount. It's like, wait a minute, you know, because you know. Uh, I, I got to tell you, this terrible thing here in New York. What happens is, if you're over 65, you can apply for a subway pass that then only costs about a dollar twenty-five a ride instead of the two twenty-five a ride. Right? Which, if you ride a lot, is significant. So you get your senior pass. Mm -hmm. And in big, bold letters on the pass, <laughs> it says senior. Yeah. And you're going, do you really have to do that? Couldn't you just put it in the little <laughs> letters up in the corner? You know? Yeah. You have to I'm do that. Married. Yeah. Old fart, it should say, you know. So. Yeah. Because I've always prayed since I was a child to age gracefully. I mean, it's been my goal, and I thought about it a lot. There's what? no way to age gracefully. There's no way to. It's the things you didn't expect. I mean, there's some yeah. things you can predict, but other things catch you surprise by surprise, and it's like, oh, no okay, denying it. Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, your hair looks great. I, uh, what color is that? <laughs> it's kind of a reddish something. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be blonde, but yeah. my hair has so much if red in it. If you didn't put the color in it, which I assume you do, I do. How gray would you be? See, I don't know because I've colored my hair since I was in my 20s. And it was always like when your roots are showing, got to get the brunette away. So it never occurred to me that some women color their hair to get the gray away. But because um, I'm just like, uh oh, dark roots, got to get that fixed. But I imagine I would have well, maybe a, a, a third or two. Gray, and did you know there? Columbia just did a study that stress, like even they they can detail when the stress began, almost down to the day, does gray your hair. Did you notice with like Obama how gray he got as he yeah. was in office? Yes. Now, I, I said to some people, well, I guess that's just age, but maybe it's exactly what you're talking about, stress. Yeah. Because Clinton had, and the presidency is a really good uh, study, yeah. an example, yeah. because of the crisis. But Marjorie, crisis. during COVID, Marjorie couldn't go to her hair guy or whatever. Mm -hmm. So and she grayed out. And she looks fabulous. And she looks great. You know, uh, if somehow, if you don't fight aging, you look better than if you fight it. I mean, there's nothing worse than people with bad facelifts. Okay. Oh, my gosh. You want to see a bunch in quick succession go on a cruise. I mean, you can see Really? Them. Really? Oh, yeah. And you see the ones you don't know are the ones that are really good. But if you ever see an interview with 
um, Nicole Simpson's sisters. There are three, and it's a common interview because they were launching a book from her, about her life, you yeah. know, which kind of got in the shuffle. And the one in the middle, who's, I don't know if she's the youngest or the oldest, but they're always in the same order. And the one in the middle has lips the size of the Hindenburg, man. Mm -hmm. They are huge. <laughs> I mean, then they take up her, like, half her face. I can't imagine she looks in the mirror and says, boy, I don't like that. Fabulous. Well, what I'm saying is uh, there's such, you know, aging gracefully, the best way to describe the best way to age gracefully, it's just age. Just don't, yeah. you know. Like, uh, my face looks like it's melted caramel right now. You know, so. <laughs> People keep wanting to bite you around Halloween. Thinking yeah, I, I, I keep thinking of getting the eyes done. Yeah, I see, that's what I would get if I got something done. Well, I would get the, the bags. But, you know, you know, they want, five, what, five six $6,000 to do the bags. Yeah. What? It's just it bags. Could... Just get the fat out of there and suture it up and let it send me home and charge me 50 cents. You know, come on. Yeah. Get the fat out and shoot it in somebody's ass. Well, no, it would have, no, excuse me. It would have cost me $5,000 if I did it. I see. I got my, had my eyes done because they were, uh, the, the lids were drooping so that half my eyeball was being covered by my lids. And, and uh -huh. that's not good because that impedes your vision. So sure. it was taken care of by Medicare, okay? I had yeah. uh, the lids done. And uh, now you can see, you see, you can see my whole eyeball. Yeah. You know, I'm not, uh, it's, yeah. But uh, at that time he said, well, I'll do the bags for 5000 if you want, because yeah. you can't charge that off to Medicare. Oh, okay. You know? So but, yeah. uh, I said, oh, okay, because he said, I'll have you in the operating room, and so all those expenses will be taken care of by Medicare. Oh, very good. Yeah, and I just decided not to do it because I didn't want to put out the 5000 Now, I got all yeah. that money recently. I would have just said, here, where do I write the check? Yeah, because yeah. vanity is expensive, man. Yeah, I'll but I, they, don't, they don't look that bad, do they? No, I don't okay. notice them at all, and I've known you for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you notice what I wondered is, does putting in a contact lens over a period of 20 years, because you've got to do this. And so I, it has to have some effect on the muscular. Uh, I don't know that you know. it does. You know, the, 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 the contact itself doesn't. You're talking about opening up yeah, the eye the, to do it. The procedure of inserting it. Yeah. I have wondered that since I started wearing contacts. But I decided the, the trade-off was that, you know, contacts are better. I see better with them. They're not a hassle. Yeah. And I think I look, maybe it takes, it shaves about three months off do you, my do age. Do you sometimes <laughs> just forget you have them in? Oh, and I always forget. Always forget, yeah, because they just, you just get so used to them. I just could, the idea of putting something in my eye like that bothers me. But I imagine after you get used to it, it's just, you know, it's, just, it's easy peasy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, they don't bother me, except when one gets a divot. You know, like a little. Well, I yeah, you, you and your and your divity. Uh, <laughs> uh, Must be something in my now, approach. Have you, do, have you ever like looked in the mirror and gone? Oh yeah, haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> and now, do you those internet things where you can age yourself? Put a photo, and they'll age you. This is what you'll look like when you're thirty. This is what you'll look like when you're fifty. When you're 70, do you ever do that? I did that years ago. I think there was something I saw and I did it, and it would, it, I, didn't, I didn't wind up looking like that. No, yeah. and well, because you don't account for so much. But now the move is toward uh, your biological age. There are tests to factor in all the lifestyle choices that you make, and that's your biological age. So that, that's the new well, test. That's Larry using. Bubbles Brown, who, by the way, if you want to ever have a life-affirming discussion, just talk with Larry. <laughs> uh, oh, you fib. <laughs> uh, uh, on my show, he, he, he talked about that, hey, there's a site you can go to, and he told me what the site was, and it'll tell you how long you have to live. <laughs> oh, how nice. Does so, it tell you the day? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Marjorie did it. 
Uh, she it's should meeting. have been dead five years ago, okay, <laughs> according to that thing. So I don't, I don't go with, here's what you're going to look like when you're 83. Mm -hmm. Right. It's just another way to make money off people's curiosity. I just looked at a thing that they had on uh, on uh, uh, YouTube about uh, 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 actors who are over the age of ninety, and then comparing wow. their young picture to their new picture, and you know, got all the way up to I think Mel Brooks is uh, ninety seven now, something like that. Yeah, I didn't even know if he was still alive or not. I know his wife passed away. Oh yeah, but, a long uh, time ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, and Carl Reiner, his best bud. You know, recently. He I went mean, as well. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, a yeah. couple of these people were dead at, since that thing was made. But you look at them, and some of the pictures, they look terrific. And some pictures, they look whatever happened to them. I mean, you know, I used to have this big joke I used to give. Did you ever... You know who Jackie Coogan is? Wasn't he the, the boy star, the child star? Uh, it's interesting you remember that. Most people remember his Uncle Fester on the uh, oh, Adams Family. I did not now, know when that. When he did the kid with Charlie Chaplin, he was considered the most adorable boy in the world. He was just this idolized child about how cute he was and how adorable he was and how beautifully he worked with uh, Chaplin and the kid. And then, you know, they wound up being Uncle Fester on the <laughs> Adams family. You know, and, and, that. <laughs> and you kind of think to yourself, what morning did he get up, look in the mirror, and go, what the fuck happened to me? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the trick. Because it's gradual, we just don't notice. And I think at some point, you stop caring about the affectations that you're going through yeah. to look the way you know you can look like if you know you're going to do a one-shot national tv show uh you would make sure that everything was in place i mean you were looking your fat most fabulous for that but every day we just get you know it just gets moot like why bother why bother yeah no yeah. i you know it really is um aging is not so, what is it? Betty Davis said, "Getting old ain't for sissies." Oh, okay. I agree with her more. Yeah, you know? and it's true. I mean, it, it's uh, it's not uh, it's not uh, all fun and games. You know, I mean, uh, I don't go out a lot. I don't walk a lot because my walking it's a lot harder for me to walk because of the neuropathy and this thing and that thing. You know, I mean, I can walk. Uh, yesterday, I walked a mile. You know. That's good. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's pretty good, but I have to use a cane. Uh, it's not because of, the, I, of pain or the, uh, whatever. I just carry it for uh, to keep in case I fall. Okay. Yeah, security. It's security. Yeah. And occasionally I feel a little off balance, so I put it on the ground. But a lot of time I just walk with it off the ground. Uh, yeah. It's nice to have that you know, yeah. resource. But, I mean, and now I have to go to physical therapy for this. Yeah. Now, what does that entail for your particular condition? I don't know. I haven't gone to it yet. Marjorie keeps oh. annoying me saying, make that appointment, go to the physical therapy. And I, I hate physical therapy, not because of going to the physical therapy. If all I had to do was go to the physical therapy, that would be fine. But yeah. here's how the physical therapy works. For an hour, they work you on stuff and little things like that. And, you know, uh, work the muscles and they uh, do some massaging of your legs and whatever. And then they send you home with a set of things you're supposed to do when you're home. Ah, well, how I, 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 why am I going to PT? I'm going to PT because I don't want to have to do stuff at home. Right. <laughs> You know, and That's if I'm going to do stuff in. at home, why the hell am I paying you? Right. You know. And now some some physical therapy is more like massage. I could get behind that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm not going and, to a chiropractor. That That's uh, ridiculous. You don't believe in them? Well, we'll talk about this next time because we're almost running out of time here. But I have this big fight with Marjorie all the time over that. You know. With your beloved? Huh? Over he's pro and your con. I, I'm con. Yeah, I just oh. I think it's I think it's the phoniest business alive. You know, and how they how they've been able to continue to 
uh, work with people because they're dealing with medicine too. You know, they're dealing with people who may have some illnesses and things like that. And some of these, well, we'll get into it next time okay. because we're gotcha. running out of time here. But it's so good to see you on the mend without that big uh, tampon on your eye and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. And it feels better, and it's more fashionable at parties. It really is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there she is, the lovely and attractive Lori Thompson. Bye, Lori. Later, man. Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, thank you, Lori, and uh, hello, everybody. Wait a minute. Let me just get a few things here, like the microphone just right. There we go. Hello. How, how y'all doing? You doing okay? Did you have a nice weekend? Uh, I I had. I wish I could say I had a nice weekend, but I didn't do anything. So, you know, we just sat here watching uh, 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 one series we've been watching, which was on, uh, was on um, Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime, but it came out several years ago called Tin Star, and it's okay, but the second year sucks, <laughs> okay? So we're probably not going to watch the whole thing, all right, uh, the second year. Well, but the first year was pretty weird, pretty good. Anyway, hello, everybody. Uh, there's some people waiting to come on here. Oh, we got, we got quite a few, so we should probably uh, admit them to our to our show here as they start coming on. There they are. There's Charlie Wallace, and there's uh, Jeff, and there's Josh, and there's Alan. Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Huh? How are you doing? I'm, do I'm doing okay, you know. Good. I mean, if I'm 84, how good is that? I don't know. Is your cane wore out yet? You need me to send you another one? No, no. I'm probably going to need a new bottom sucko, sucky thing. You, you know, know? That, that little thing is hard to get on and off. It's just easier to get a new cane. Let me know when you need a cane. Well, I still have the other one you sent to Marjorie, and she hasn't used it, so. Okay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll use that one. I'm thinking of buying one that's got, like, the head of a lion on it or something, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, they're like 49 bucks. It's all. They're cheap. They're, that's the cheapest thing you can buy yep. is a cane. You know. And it, it's good security, and it's good for balance. And Either that or I get myself a nice uh, flamboyant 21-year-old uh, to hold onto my arm. You know. Absolutely, because you're Alex Bennett. I'm Alex Bennett. You know. Of course, Marjorie might not go along with that, but, you know, I mean, you're paying for that. Well, I have to pay for something. You know. Newsflash in the New York Times. Alex Bennett falls out of eighth floor window. <laughs> now, my jaw has been hurting because I'm grinding, I'm grinding my teeth lately. Ouch. And it just, it's, uh, it's right here. It's right here. You know, not a tooth or anything. It's just the jaw just aches. I like your conversation with Lori. They put sulfuric acid into my eye. Well, they, 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 that's what they do. That's how they get rid of uh, of uh, of uh, um, pink, pink eye. Pink, yeah, pink eye has bacteria, and they get rid of it with antibiotics. Well, they, no, they don't. Not always. Okay. The immediate way to get rid of it, if you've got a real infection, is they just uh, thin your eye, and they put this, I, I guess it's sulfuric acid, I think, but I'm not quite sure. And okay. that takes care of it immediately, you yeah. know. Well, look it up right now online. Charlie's what, looking it? it up. Yeah. I what's, believe sulfuric acid is the acid that's one in your stomach and two in your car battery. No, but it, then it's some kind of acid, okay, that they put in my okay. eye. And uh, it was, uh, was uh, you know, it was, it, was, it was okay. Got rid of it. Yes, sir, Charlie, what are, you, what are you finding? I'm looking it up. Uh, okay. He's very slow at this sort of thing. Anyway. How are you all doing? What, uh, Jeff, do you have a good weekend? Wonderful day. Oh, you, sound, you sound excited. Well, look, at, look at his new ear. ear <clears throat> wow. Ooh. Voice here is not working well. Is it working well? <clears throat> no? Oh, you know what the problem is? I got to tell you. You use earphones with uh, the uh, Internet, 
and you get a feedback. You get it's a delayed. It's not exactly on time. So I never use it. I mean, I can take my computer here and put, you know, wireless headsets on it. But if I want to listen to music, that's fine. But if I'm talking to you, I don't want to hear you like a, a little minor second later, you know? So, I mean, uh, it, it, yeah, you probably shouldn't be using those ear, earphones. And besides, we can see your inside your head with those. They get a little... I'm kidding. <laughs> Hello there, Kevin. Hi there, Alex. What's happening with Kevin? How you be? What's happening with Kevin? Oh, not much. Just preparing for a trip. Well, where are you going? Up to Oregon? No, Washington and Victoria. Washington and Victoria. Is that just a vacation or are you going yeah. to go see your daughter and she's going to go with you? No, my daughter's going with us. Oh, okay. She's going with you. Yeah. Yeah. How's she doing with the boyfriend? Is that still in, in play? Just got back from a week in South Dakota. Really? Yep. Yep. So they're they're kind of uh, they're, they're they're doing okay yep. together. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. 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 Well, you're happy about that, aren't you? Yeah, she's all right. So I'm South Dakota's a uh, red state, isn't it? Sure is. Yeah, boy, you're gonna be happy when she says when she's wearing a Trump for president. Hat. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> is no, the boy is a the very boy blue family? It, oh, it is a very blue family. Oh yeah. Oh good, oh, yeah. good. They're probably gonna get chased out of South Dakota, but you know. No, they've been living there for a long time, so I guess they're uh, just oddballs over there. So yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, she don't. They don't like the dog killer. <laughs> I don't like the dog killer. What do you mean a dog killer? Who's the dog? Wait, 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 explain that to me. Christy Nome. Oh, Christy Nome. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's the governor of that state, that's isn't very, she? That's their leader over there, yeah. Oh, yeah, the dog killer. Yeah. The saddest thing I had to do was take my dog out and shoot him. Well, then don't take him out and shoot him. And then I go get my billy goat. Yeah, and I'll shoot him. <laughs> Damn it. Right, come over to my house. Somebody's I'll shoot you. Yeah. And Josh, what are you doing here today? I, I Isn't this the week that you're working on this these days? And then by the end of the week, you're, you're yeah, okay? You're good to it go? Is, but, uh, it is, but I had to take uh, a day off uh, for something with my wife, her stepmother, her long time, like 40 years, uh, stepmother, uh, she had a brain aneurysm a few days ago, and uh, she she and she died today. So wow, that wow. Was cool. So I was off work to look like half days the last few days, running her back and forth. Took tonight off, and gonna work tomorrow. And then I was off a few days after that anyway. And then I'll be on some bereavement time that we are granted next week to uh, help get her to the funeral and things like that so okay so you, you oh you get bereavement stuff right yeah, yeah yeah i'm eligible for you know i mean anybody is at you know where i work so um there'll be some stuff it sounds like they got some pretty nice things where you work i mean they don't yeah. have to do that uh -huh. do they oh no they don't have to no uh you know a lot of big companies do it smaller ones don't i've obviously worked places in my life that didn't you know do that they would they i mean they would give you the day off you know or what i mean they just wouldn't pay you but yeah. uh where i currently work uh you do get some time and uh you know there's a guideline for it and you're paid you know so mm -hmm. that, uh so it's good yes you know it's bad for you know it's uh like i said it's a long time you know stepmother her, her biological parents, you know, they divorced when she was very, very young, and her dad got remarried not too long after. So, you know, he'd been married to this uh, person, you know, 37, 38 years or whatever. And she had a couple aneurysms in her brain that had been causing a lot of problems. And they uh, told her if they didn't fix them, you know, that they would uh, get her here pretty soon uh, in the next few months. But when they went in to uh, do the repair, uh, it just, the first one they touched apparently burst and they couldn't get the bleeding to stop for like over 20 minutes, I guess. And the doctor said that's, you know, not good. That's way too long and that she probably wouldn't recover and she didn't. 
Wow, I did. Boy, that's that's depressing. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. You know, but that's I'm just you uh, know. How, cl how close was your wife to this stepmother? Uh, you know, pretty pretty close. I mean, pretty close. You know, I mean, she lived with him uh, a lot when she was, you know, still in school and everything. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, you know, uh, you know, it'd been almost forty years. So. You know, she was going on vacations with him when she was a kid and all that other kind of stuff. And, you know, we, and we went up there and saw him all the time. Uh, so, you know, it was, you know, good relationship and everything. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's difficult. And, of course, you know, her, she has a lot of concerns about, you know, her, her father, you know, because oh. he doesn't have any, you know, brothers and sisters and his parents are gone, you know. So he's, he's kind of on his own now. So how you know, old is he? Uh, probably like 68, 69, something really? like that. Really? That young? Um, how, how young was she? Uh, I think she said today that she was 69. Wow. Wow. Yeah, but, you know, brain aneurysms just, I mean, I guess anybody can, you know, get that. I don't think, I don't know that it has anything to do with age. I don't really know what causes it, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, 69. And, you know, like I said, they had been married for a long time. So, uh, yeah, just I mean, just rough. It was, yeah. It was like unexpectedly expected. It was she had these things, and they really felt like they could do a surgery and fix them, and she could go on. So you know, she said, "Okay, I'll do it." And I mean, she walked herself into the hospital and everything. But there, they said there is a small risk when we go in there that it could bust, and that it is did exactly that. that. By the way, uh, it's time now to uh, enter into our game show that we're playing tonight. Is Alan right or wrong? Uh, and uh, our... our, uh, our I, I know what type of acid it is, but I bet Charlie does too now. Yeah. Okay. I, it took me forever to get an answer to that. <laughs> you know, if you... If, uh, uh, you, you know, just you, could have said, how do you cure red eye? Or pink eye, right? I did, and it all it kept telling me is is what it is, over and over again. It kept telling me what it is. It wouldn't tell me how to. Treat oh wait a minute, hold on a second. I'll just ask. Uh, 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 what's I, I, her, what's her I'm going to bet it says. It. I'm going to bet it says boric acid. No, it says hypo. Well, unless hypochloric acid is boric acid, but hmm. it is acid. Yeah, and yeah. they say that's the way you clear up. Uh, that's how you do a viral. Eye. Pink eye, right. but if it's bacterial, they can treat it with with antibiotics. But like Alan said, yeah, yeah. But uh, so I was right. They they treated me with, uh, I guess, so I, it was some kind of acid. Some too, kind you know? of acid. It depends on whether it's viral or bacterial. Yeah, right. But it cleared it right up. I mean, just it was gone the next morning. You know, up until Good then, enough. my eyes were sticking together, and you know, it was like horrible, just disgusting, vile, yeah. as it were. I'm not sure what hypochloric acid is. Hydrochloric acid is what's in your stomach. So mm. I don't know what hypochloric is. Hmm. I have no hmm. idea. But anyway, back. But yeah. So anyway, okay. So we've we, these been two medical things going on here so far. <laughs> you know. Did and, uh. So, I know that RFK Jr. went to Trump. And he tried to get a job. And then the Washington Post has an article today that says now he went to Harris and he tried yeah. to get a job. So I heard he'd that really, too. really like to be the secretary of something. <laughs> but if that doesn't work out, I mean, if you need help at GabNet, I mean, I, he lives in New York. <laughs> <laughs> you can be the secretary of GabNet. Did he say like he really he, got a hold of Trump and said if you got some kind of opening in your administration? Oh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, there was that big story, I don't know, three I weeks ago. I thought he was running you know, for president. He is, but that he had, he had met with <clears throat> Trump about endorsing him in, in exchange for some kind of a cabinet position. I think he's predicting and, defeat. Yeah, <laughs> and... and, and <laughs> That yeah, didn't work smart. out, and uh, I don't know. Five or six hours ago, the Washington Post post yeah. put up a story <laughs> that says he went to the Harris campaign to see if he could meet with Harris about the same thing. Yep. Yeah. Like this guy He's really. The race. I saw that too, Josh. And They're both times it was for a cabinet position. It's like yeah. this guy really wants to be the secretary of something. I mean, it's like 
You know, I'm just, I'm amazed. Uh, what the hell's wrong with this guy? Yeah, I'm just amazed by everything I see in this year of campaigns, okay? I mean, it, it, to begin with, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what we see with uh, uh, Kamala Harris is we see um, excitement, you know, which I'm happy to see. I mean, I've been so depressed about, I didn't want to hear about politics ever again. You know, I mean, go have your election. Leave me alone. You know, just uh, let me have, uh, let me spend my declining years in a certain kind of not paying attention to anything that's going on. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, she comes along and adds joy yep. to the uh, to as a component to politics. And I really like that. That made me feel yeah. real good. But I'll tell you what made me feel real bad today. Marjorie always has MSNBC on. Here we go again. What do you mean, here we go again? You bring that up about every show. Well, go ahead. Well, you know, what they're doing is exactly what they did in 2016. Yeah. They can't yep. shut up about Trump. Yeah. You know, you say, hey, today we looked at the polls and Trump was this. Now, on to other news... Don't even talk about Trump, but they just endlessly talk about Trump, 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 Trump. Yeah, yeah. Now, granted, I think he's going to get his ass handed to him in this election, yeah. okay? But if anybody is helping him not have his a, 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 a ass handed to him in this election, it's MSNBC with all their Trump this and Trump that, and doesn't Trump suck? And you know, Trump lied about this and Trump lied about. Just don't pay attention to him. Nope. He, he's like uh, he's like uh, what do you call it? Uh, Beetlejuice. You know, you say his name three times and he shows up. Right. You don't want that. You don't want no Beetlejuice deal. Yeah, and I found it very interesting that they, you know, uh, they're all very hesitant to even talk about the hacked emails from his campaign, you know, because it's it's, it's just, well, you know, we got to verify the authenticity. And, you know, I mean, it was just like, well, you know, in 2016, when the DNC was hacked and Hillary Clinton's personal emails were hacked, you guys really didn't seem to care. Yeah. You know, but yeah. now now he runs around talking about how bad this is and how irresponsible it would be. I don't think it I don't think it even happened. I don't think it even happened. Oh no. Okay. But, I don't yeah. think it even happened. I think he's saying it to look like, hey, see, they're out to get me because I'm Yeah, I don't uh, know. I, th I think the FBI said I think yeah, I was gonna that, say the FBI announced it. So you know that they were uh looking in you know that it happened and that they were looking into it and their initial reaction was that it was a foreign uh foreign actor and you know they hinted around that it was iran iran whatever you want no, to say I, admit, I, admit, I don't know I, I admit it now i did it yeah well the, well, the <laughs> fbi actually said that that uh kamala's email was uh, was hacked over the weekend too I, I don't know. It's a, I think it's a fact of life. We're all going to get hacked at yeah. some point. Well, I got, a good, to I got it. a good idea on how not to get hacked. Can I Can I just serve this up as a possibility? Don't as put anything in writing. Yeah, don't write. You know, don't write <laughs> don't put down. anything in writing, okay? That's right. No email, no text messages. No, just go over to the person and say, hi, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> or if, if you want to get it out to a bunch of people, you all put them all in a, one room together and tell them what you got to tell them. Uh, Don't yeah. put it on paper. Yeah. You they know. hack my emails. All they're going to get is what who's what <laughs> I'm firing on what field tonight. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Hello, Tony. Like the gangsters, remember they tell Gotti, don't talk on the phone. They used to always, just always have them talking oh, on the oh, street. Oh, yeah, but then they would walk on the street and have their hands yep. on their mouth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kill this guy. <laughs> yeah, I just, well, I just, I just, I mean, they've been slowly, I mean, you know, like I said, since the assassination deal, CNN is so careful to make sure they don't upset him and they don't, you know, they need to be fair. We need to, all this, you know, we don't want to do anything improper and, you know, he's he's been crying about how they need to treat him more fairly and give him as much time as they mm. give to Kamala. You know, and, and it's just like, and, and ever since, you know, the email thing, they're like, oh, his emails, well, you know, I don't know if we should re really report on that. Is that really newsworthy? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, it's like, come on, you got really? 
I mean, I, I, I mean, it's just like, I don't even know if the paper that they printed them off of in 2016 had cooled off where it came out of the printer yet. Yeah. Before they were on the air reading you that stuff. I mean, really? I got a, I got a theory, okay, about the assassination attempt on Trump, that it was a setup, and the guy who they hired to do it got killed. <laughs> huh? Hey, where have we heard of that before? Don't does I mean oh, I don't it. trust anything that's coming out of that guy. You know, come on, he's he's oh I got shot in the ear. Look, there's blood all over my face. Oh look, I got my hand up in the air with the fist and everything. Oh look, now I've shown up at the uh, at the convention wearing an ear tampon. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and he's got the little ear tampon oh, on. And he gives his speeches, and everybody goes, oh, that's terrible. Then the next time you see him, he's got a little bandage right here. And two days mm. later, there's nothing there? I mean, if you got shot by a bullet, okay, w wouldn't you have something there? Wouldn't there be a little kind of like... He was, I, he was I, golfing. I, 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 cut, I cut myself. I get a scab. Okay. Yeah, you would think yeah, that. You have a scab. Well, I mean, he has he has stamina. He heals fat. You know. And now, right. now all the the evangel evangelicals are saying it was a gift from God. They wanted Donald. He wanted Donald Trump to live. No, I don't buy that. Yeah, well, I want to know. I, I want to know. Lucky. I want to know why Donald Trump, why God <laughs> wanted this other guy to die. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah me too. So uh, if it was a gift from God, Donald wouldn't have turned his head to the right. The bullet would have entered his. Well, head. I mean, even if 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 you had a clip, you know, clipped your ear or whatever, wouldn't it somehow cause something else, something was somewhere else? Well, I mean, that would rip your ear up. I mean, I, I would know, think, yeah. I mean, I would it, think. I mean, I've I've seen a lot of gunshot wounds, and it doesn't just like like a little like a little piece of pencil go through your ear and come and, out the and, other and side keep, and everything's keep, fine keep wearing the tampon or the ear uh, bandage for at least a month you he know was, he was on the golf yeah, course really the next know. day with nothing <laughs> on his ear stitches, they finally said what he what? didn't even need stitches well then what 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 was what what happened there or did he have a blood packet in his hand or something did he like squeeze that's, you what know? that's what i'm wondering too yeah there's somebody oh. here who wants to come on called Aether Uden. I don't oh, I, I, I don't trust. I don't I don't I don't trust Aether Uden. It's JD Vance's new name. Oh. <laughs> I hear he's gonna have a debate with uh, Walt on October the first. Oh really? Who? It's in the news about an hour ago. Who? Walt's accepted. Uh the vice president uh uh, NBC, I believe, or CBS, oh, one man. of the two. Our, On October you know what's going to be? It's going to be a tired old thing with him getting up there and saying, you know, you took advantage of the military and you didn't serve. You know, the, the guy spent 25 years in the National Guard. What do they want him to do? Spend well, another you know, 30? J.D. Vance was a, was, a, was a typewriter expert in the Marine Corps. You know, all he did was write stories. I mean, that's not a real service to the country. Yeah, well, I mean, his whole thing about, I mean, I loved what what, uh, what Waltz did. Nick Walters, that doesn't look good either, because it just came up after the phony name. Okay. <laughs> uh, so go, go away. Don't try. Don't try again. Uh, anyway, uh, no, but what I was going to say is, that you know, it just it, it just uh, uh, bothers me. Oh yeah. Oh, what happened was um, uh, Walls uh, gave a speech defending his military record. I don't think he should even have to defend it. You know, if he was in the military, spent 25 years, there's nothing he has to excuse himself for. Uh, maybe he overstated something back in 2018 or was maybe saying it wrong or something like that, but it certainly wasn't terrible. And uh, to then go and assail this guy is as bad as when Trump went after McCain. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yep. Uh, yep. I, don't, I didn't consider him a hero. Well, you know. 
Except for McCain was a true hero and Trump was never in the military. Yeah, but what I'm all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is that, that this whole thing with J.D. Vance, with him, he gave so he gave a speech, and he said, uh, you know, you should never ever disparage anybody who spent time yeah. in the military. Okay, and, that is wrong. And as but then fact, he said, he, he, he said, and that you know, he said, and then he said. Uh, but you know, all we well, all we should do is thank them for their service, which I'm doing for J.D. Vance, okay? Yep. And I admire his service. And I thought that was very nice and very you know that, that's very gentlemanly. And he said, but I don't think that one military person should question another military person's service. You yep. know? And I uh, it was very really nice. Low life. And you know how J.D. Vance re replied to it? He just kept up with this thing. He's like Trump. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it, 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 it's going to lose him election, you know. Everybody's so used to people being civil now, at least on the Democratic side, that uh, they're not going to put up with the kind of crap that Vance and, and Trump are putting down, putting down. And they have told Trump, stop it. Stop it with the crowd size thing. He's so into crowd size, you know. That's because there were only 50 people at his inauguration. <laughs> well, the point is that he, he, he makes a big deal about that. And they said, stop with it already. That's not an issue. You the know? Republicans are telling he, him to stop. You know, go yeah. after her record. Go after her uh, politics. <laughs> But you know, don't go after her on a personal level. Stop with that. It's not. It's not getting you any friends. It's counterproductive. It's counterproductive. Exactly. Well, but I'm he's sure not. They but, want him to stop talking about how pretty uh, Kamala is too. He had some comment about oh, that. Oh yeah, he said something. <laughs> yeah. Now when Melania leaves her, he'll he'll, he'll hit up uh, Kamala next. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Kamala's taken. She has a very That's nice. Right. She has a very nice Jewish husband. Of course, they constantly are claiming that Kamala is anti-Semitic because she's you know, blah 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 blah. And I'm going, well, why did she marry a Jew? Because she wants to make his life miserable. What you know? I don't understand it. I really, I, I, I you know, and, and and if I were Trump, I would listen to people for a change. Although I don't think. Even if he listened to them and he suddenly became a nicer, warmer Trump tomorrow, which is impossible, uh, I don't think he would have a chance of turning this thing around. I think the, the momentum has started, and the momentum is going to keep going. Would you agree with that, Josh, what I'm saying? Yeah, certainly moving that way. I mean, they have a good deal of momentum on the Harris side and on the Democratic side. And it looks like, hopefully, that it will drive turnout that probably would not have been there before. I mean, I think that the election with Biden would have been very close, very you know, similar to last time. Yeah. But I think you probably would have seen a Trump victory that was, you know, about the size of the Biden victory. You know, I think it would have just kind of flip-flopped. But now... I think that this was able to put people kind of back to where we were when we voted last time, where, you know, Biden won, you know, and once everything was counted relatively, I don't want to say easily, but, you know, it was it was a good, clear, clean victory. And I think, you know, they were able to kind of reset that now and, and get back to that point. But I think she's going to drive some turnout that otherwise wouldn't have been there. And I think you could see it be even better than that, hopefully. Well, I think she's going to, I think a lot of uh, Democrats are going to come out right. that, that, that we might have stayed home if Biden were. Yeah. Right. I mean, they, and I don't know, you know, where, whose it was or whatever, but the campaign, you know, just two or three days ago was pointing to some polling. And like I said, I don't remember who did it of, you know, a younger people, the 18 to 25 age group uh, that were saying prior to the change, they were just, you know, there was a high percentage of them that, that were just saying they weren't going to vote because they didn't like either one of these, the people. Yeah. And the percentage of them that 
are saying that they have changed their mind and that they will now vote was very high. And they were saying, you know, they were going to vote for Harris, you know, because they saw it as a waste of their time. It's a race of two people that are old and out of touch and we don't like either one of them. And, you know, we care about the Palestinians and this, that, and the other, and I'm not voting for either one of these clowns. But now that it's, the race is different now, a lot of them are saying, oh, well, I can, I can vote now. And of course, they're saying that because finally there's a candidate in the race that they like. Therefore, they're, you know, vote for well, that. Well, I feel energized, you know, and I haven't felt oh, yeah. energized in years, you know, because I just never felt, I felt I was having to have the uh, lesser of two Try Viagra. Huh? Try Viagra. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, uh, the, so they're pointing to a lot of positive, you know, stuff. I mean, you know, like North Carolina, for example, you know, they're making some inroads in North Carolina and, and thinking that if they can chip away at this, you know, if they could get it, you know, Democratic presidential, uh, presidential candidate has not taken North Carolina since 2008, Obama's first election. Yeah. You know, they he didn't get it in his reelect and, you know, no one got it after. So, you know, that that's pretty significant, I think, you know. I mean, so... But I thought the most significant stuff that I saw within the last couple of days was that there is polling out there now and the states that are going to be super critical, you know, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. And in all yeah. three of those, she is now up to over 50% in the question to voters of who do you think will handle the economy better, Harris or Trump? And she now has like a 51 46 lead on that question, which Biden was getting trounced on. And co coincidentally or not, that also happens to be about the same numbers that she has in the overall polling there for who will you vote for. Mm -hmm. So for people who think that folks are saying, I'm going to vote based on the economy in that state, in those three states, it's sort of bearing out because you're starting to see she is now winning when they are asked that question, who will handle the economy better? She is the one that they're saying would handle it better than Trump. And that's about the same number of people who are saying they plan to vote for her. So that, to me, is very good news. Yeah. Well, also, so, they, they came out with a, a list of states and, and where she's winning and losing. And in almost every state, she's ahead. She isn't within yep. the error mm -hmm. of margin of error in many yeah, states. Right. But still, still, uh, it's, you know, you can then say, okay, let's go forward now to, to election day. She's got a lot of time to build that momentum, and she's got the momentum, and she can keep building and building and building. He's been trying to build momentum for four years, okay? And he, he's pooped out. He has no new ideas to come up with, nothing else to get out and give a speech on. And she's fresh. She's, as I, as I, as I said before, you know, uh, and I would say this about a guy if he was running, he's kind of fresh pussy, you know? Uh, she's, uh, uh, she, and it has, that's not meant to be sexual when I said that. It's meant to be that, you know, it's like a, a new person you're going out with and you're having sex with for the first time. And, God, this is so refreshing because it isn't like all the other people, yeah, you know? We, we talked a few weeks ago, uh, Saturday or whatever, uh, and we said that it was clear that around two-thirds of the nation wanted someone new in this presidential race. And we said, you know... I think the first party to give it to them will probably pull us off. And the Democrats were the ones who said, yep, we've heard your cries, people. But well, James Carville, James Carville, in an interview, and I can't remember with who, uh, said a, a year ago uh, that anybody who was younger, who yeah. ran against yeah. Trump, He's could smart. automatically win. It's just a younger person, you know? I don't think Trump's looking that great. I, I mean... He looks like, old. He looks old. Right. I yeah. mean, the last couple of times, I mean, he's not... But then if he had him compared to Biden, then he doesn't look so old. Well, I agree, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I never said Biden. Right, yeah, I mean, 
But I just, I mean, he doesn't look. Well, nobody knows Especially more about my nobody, nobody no. knows more about uh, my fresh pussy philosophy than Trump, you know, right? Yeah. There's, oh, yeah. there's a guy who invented free pussy, you know, <laughs> new pussy. If his right hand, I, I don't mean talk. that as any sexual remark, folks. I'm saying that it has to do with, you know, you want somebody that uh, you haven't gone out with before, you know. It always is a uh, Refreshing. Now, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just we'll see, you know. But I mean, I you they yeah. with this move to her, they kind of are now running his game on him, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I can only imagine if Biden had like listed the wrong person that he rode on a helicopter with in this big long story, yeah. I mean, they would be losing their fucking mind, you know. And then for all he said, oh, we got the records. Well, where are they? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, produced, there, there's, I've, I haven't seen the photograph of him and, you know, Willie Brown riding around in a helicopter. I haven't seen the a passenger manifest and all that. I mean, it's just so bizarre. And then didn't he say that it took place in like 2018 or whatever? Something you know? like that, yeah. And what yeah. I don't understand is like, so he was president, right? So, I mean, if he's flying around in 2018 with Willie Brown and it, he came that close to dying, wasn't this on the presidential helicopter on Marine One? You, do you not think that that would have been, yeah. like, the biggest news story ever? Because, well, I it mean, might, have been, might have been an earlier time. It might yeah, not maybe, have been then. Yeah. But uh, it, supposedly when it did take place was was with an entirely different person, a congressman from, yeah, uh, yeah. from, right. from L.A., who yeah. uh, they were out looking at forest fires in a helicopter. Yeah, but, you know, I just I just laughed that, you know, if Biden had... Hey, listen, listen, they give, give it to Trump. All black people look alike, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny. That, I mean, bizarre, really. Yes, Alan. So something I think may be missing in this picture with Trump is he is anti-black. And he is really upset that a black woman is kicking his ass. Well, I think you can suppose that, but yeah. you know, I, you know, uh, to begin with, uh, I, I kind of am going to argue in Trump's favor for a moment, okay. if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, at the Trump Corporation, a great deal of the women who were it, people of power in the Trump Corporation were women. Okay. Mm -hmm. But so, not black. Well, not not black. I don't think there's a black person working for Trump, to be honest. That, with that's you. my that's my point. It's yeah, but but black. everybody says he's <laughs> anti-woman, and I keep saying, but if you go back and you look at the Trump Corporation, he had a ton of women working for him. A lot of the women who testified in his trials about the Trump Corporation were women. A lot of the people who testified. So, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, I don't know that I agree that he necessarily is anti-woman. Uh, I think he's that, probably... That wasn't my point. He's probably... My point was he's 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 anti-black. Yeah, but he's probably a misogynist. That mm -hmm. I will probably agree with you, and he doesn't have to... He can still hire women and still, you know, be a misogynist. Sure. You know, and still be a yeah, sexist. You grab him by the pussy. Huh? You grab him by the pussy, exactly. That's right. You know. <laughs> there, there comes the P word again. Yep, there goes your money for the day. You've just been demonetized. Oh, I get, I, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting things from them now where you played. It's like on one of my promos, I have music right that that that, that it clicks off and says, "Oh, you can't play that music. That's you know, you don't have the rights to it." Well, I do have the rights to it. I pay for it, you know, and I have to then go through. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff to turn it around, okay? And it, it's ridiculous, you know, so I can't stand it. Uh, I, I hate YouTube. I, I, I think it's cute that Trump and uh, Elon Musk had a, uh, you know, meeting of the minds or whatever, and they had technical issues at X for 40 minutes. Yeah. Did you yeah. watch that? Yes, no, that was it, funny. How, how do you feel about two tools working each other over? <laughs> <laughs> that was that had to be the biggest baby 
baby oh, yeah. ass tool show that I've uh, ever seen in my life. Uh, uh, Elon Musk said, I'm going to ask you a bunch of hard questions. This is beforehand. Well, and, and everything's open, Trump says. And then at today's that, Carolina he, show, he sat there and said, oh, he worked me over. What oh, a yeah, bunch right. of shit. Worked him over. My I'll aunt. tell you what. i never seen two tools trying to work each other. Here, here, if you rub me, I'll rub you. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That's that was the biggest shit show i ever seen in my life. Good way to put it, Kevin. Yeah. That's all it was. It was a tool show. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the thing was... Elon it, Musk is the biggest piece of shit. Uh, he made him, himself look like a bigger piece of shit. Elon Musk, Elon Musk is, done. is a great talk show host. That's all I can say, you know. He, he asked the hard questions. He did oh, nothing. Oh, yeah. He sure. did nothing. Yeah. He, did he sat nothing. there and agreed with everything he part. said. And then he even got Trump... Trump, what, last week he was saying how all the electric... They built, what, six charging stations and it cost them over 150 billion dollars and then he gets with with elon musk and says oh yeah i'll build them all over the country and mm -hmm. no problem i'll build them all over the country because electric is the way to go now they were working each other like a couple of bitches in a schoolyard it was yep. funny yeah. as shit well you know what i yep. well, i'll tell you what bothers me though and i think i think charlie will agree with me on this about about the elon musk and his his self-destructive nature, shall we put it, is that the guy has been doing wonderful things with SpaceX, okay? I mean, let's face it, they can get a, a capsule up there, but Boeing can't. Uh, you know, I mean, he's, he's done wonderful stuff where SpaceX is concerned, and we'd like to see him be successful with it. But, you know, I, I'd be amazed if next year he sells any Teslas, you know? I mean, I think this is just <laughs> ruining his business completely. Would you not agree? And the next thing he was doing was telling Trump, oh, we, can, I, I can send you up more rockets. Oh, I can make this do he this. Like oh, yeah, 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 you can do that. And uh, they were just working each other. It was hilarious. And what about and when he said he fired all It was like a hand before. job to me. What, what did you, you say? Know? What did you, what did you say? Uh... Uh, I heard a clip of it. Elon Musk said how he uh, they wanted to bring, I don't know exactly, he wanted... They wanted to maybe they were threatening one of his places to bring the union or like take a vote. He fired everybody. Trump says Trump was like so so happy when he fired everybody. Like he came across like oh yeah, like I was like holy shit. It's like Trump it's like hated like, Musk a couple months ago. I mean come on, go back a couple months and listen to Trump talk about Elon Musk. Well, I gotta tell you, I mean, so I feel bad that Elon Musk is acting the way he is because he's gonna ruin Tesla. And he's gonna and he's gonna ruin SpaceX. I bet he has wind up having to sell SpaceX. X, it's his own fault. You know, and yep. I don't know that SpaceX uh, 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 will do as well under somebody else. Okay, because whatever you say about Elon Musk, that company's done pretty good stuff. Yeah, really you know. Smart. And when it came to the electric automobile, who started making every having everybody be start making Ameri uh, electric yeah. automobiles? That's Elon right. Musk. I mean, uh, for all you want to say about him, his contribution uh, scientifically to this country has been pretty good over the last couple of years. So, you know. Yeah, but he's yep. screwing up. Oh. Yeah. He's yes, plain uh, Tony. Screwing up. I, I heard you guys are sorry. I just want this, Charlie. I just want to. I heard you in the beginning of the show. Charlie, you have pink eye? No, I don't have pink eye. <laughs> oh, but you know what I was going to say? My mother used to take a tea bag, Alex. Nuquam and then wrap it in like in a like a napkin and put it on my eye. Sometimes the tea bag actually alleviated the uh because right, like it has uh, tannic acid in it or what acid I remember her doing that. I was I thought the yeah. pink eye. Okay. Yeah. But she had the pink eye and she put the tea no, bag she in her eye. Tea bag? Yeah, yeah, she tea bagged your eye, eye, did she? Is that what she yeah, did? She used to put it on my eye. I actually felt good. Well, I'll, I'll be happy to come over and tea bag your eye. <laughs> no, I do. He had it though, because I because I remember as a kid, I still oh, do it now. But my eyeballs. Tea bag yeah, your eye, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I, do, I get the tea bag. Yeah, well, where you go. get the dog you walk? The the tea bag bag your eye. Eye. What are you doing? <laughs> but what's the dog's name that you walk? The, the oh, boy? Kansas. He's such a good boy. Kansas. He'll tea bag your eye for you. <laughs> the dog can't get enough of me. Oh. Oh, oh, I boy. figured. I thought you had a, t uh, a pink eye, Charlie. That's why I wouldn't yeah. show. Yeah. Uh, they Tr were 
I, they had me look up what the, how do you treat pink eye. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. Because I, I, talk, I, was talk, I, I, I was talking to Lori about pink eye and about right. the fact that I had pink eye once. And they solved it by putting in a something like, I don't know, boric acid, some kind of acid guess, in my yeah. eye. Okay. I'm going to be saying yes. Yeah, I'm going to do the acid. Burn, to burn it out. And they still do that. Yeah. They still it do it. It just surprised me if you could put acid in your eye and it doesn't yeah. hurt your eye. Hey, I got to tell when you. When was the last time you had your eyes dilated? Boy, you talk about burn. I, yeah. I mean, got to tell you something. It made me really happy tonight. Um, Mar Marjorie came out of the kitchen with something she found that she had in the kitchen. And it was this thing. And I, I know you've probably seen them. And it's kind of like uh, it's got two round things on both sides of it. And then that you take a piece of bread and put bread on the bottom, and then you maybe put whatever filling you want in it on the, in the middle. And you put another piece of bread on, and you squash these two things together, okay, cut off the crust, and then put it over a, a, a stove and cook it, okay? Well, and then it comes out, grill. it comes out, and you got these little sandwiches yeah right do you know what i'm uh, talking about if you, you remember those yeah i think i had it my mother used to have one of those. it's almost like a thing you put over yeah. it's like a metal it, thing and like, right they, they were called toast tights mm. and i said to marjorie i said is a toast tight and she said i don't know and i went over and looked yeah it's toast tight I never when i was a kid my mother bought a toast tight we had a toast tight. She would make me little toast tight sandwiches all the time. Do the grilled cheese. Like to this cheese. day, they make toast tight. Now, how about that? You know? So uh, what is the one that Marjorie brought out all rusty at or what? No, no, no. It's completely usable. I, oh, okay. I might even just yeah. for the fun of it make a toast tight sandwich. I haven't done it in years. You know. You can get, you can use Tony's recipe: a little bit of cheese, of bam, and like a that. little bit more mm. cheese, and then, uh, and then, uh, then, uh, yeah, tea bag your your eye. You tea bag my, I still do it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so you know, I mean, uh, how about these guys up in space, huh? How about these guys at the space station that were set up by Boeing, and they were and supposed they to go up figure there? Figure out how to bring them back. They were supposed oh. to go up for I think three weeks. And then they were supposed to get back in their little Boeing capsule and just come back to Earth. Yep. Only the Boeing capsule doesn't work. <laughs> in fact, it didn't work getting up there. They had to try it a couple of times to make the, the methane go or whatever they had to have to propel it to get it to the station. Uh, so they went up and they said, we can't fix this thing. Well, uh, how are we going to get back? Well, we come back on a uh, SpaceX flight. When's the next SpaceX flight? Six months. Uh, February. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, and, and the daughter party was started again. The what? <laughs> Can they the vote daughter <laughs> party. They don't have anything to eat up there. No, they have enough to eat up there. I mean, they can take care of them, but, you know. Uh, how? Hmm? How do they get food to them for the next six months? Oh, they keep they keep sending up food and stuff like that. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I think SpaceX sends up rockets that go there. Oh, okay. They don't have a don't have a don't have a thirty seven Max to get food to them. Don't, I don't think uh, have a capsule. Am I right? Am I right, little. Charlie? They don't have a capsule for those things. Well, yeah, that's the problem. With the food ones, they don't have to have a capsule because there's no people on them. So yeah, yeah. So they just you know. They just fill it full of, uh, you know, marshmallows or something. Yeah. You know, right. Little Debbie Donuts. Donuts. Yeah. But, I mean, it, it's just amazing. I mean, uh, even Boeing can't do that right. And, again, <clears throat> you know, I have, to bring up, uh, I have to bring up Musk because we all hate him right now. But the fact of the matter is these guys are the guys who can get these people back. Yeah. You know? And uh, everybody knows that. Because it's a shame that NASA can't get their shit together. Well, NASA gets their shit together. I mean, they get stuff up there and they get it back, you know, but they have SpaceX do it these days. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, and, but they were hoping that Boeing would be another avenue of, of, uh, uh, of uh, space capsules to be able to use up there. You I know, and to, go, and to go to the. And, I, would, I would wait for. Uh, Tesla to get me out of the out of there. <laughs> I, I wouldn't get on a Boeing 
aircraft or anything. That... Well, they went up on the Boeing. I know. Yeah, you I know. know. And, and we were, uh, Marjorie and I looked at each other and said, you know, that's not coming back. Right. And the next thing <laughs> we hear, it's not coming back. You know, that's it's right. stuck up there. Well, we can't get it to work. Well, good. You know. Uh, why don't you, you know what they should do? They should send up the president and vice president of Boeing in another capsule to go fix it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, you know, I mean. Maybe Donald Trump, since he's the smartest man in the world, he can go with him, too. Well, the, the, forget that. They could send yeah. him up in the 737 Max, and he'll never come back. Yeah. But, It'll you end know, up on Mars. I mean, I just think, uh, you know, uh, do you feel that way, Charlie? Do you feel bad about that Musk, Musk is acting the way he is because he's really yeah. screwing the pooch, you know? He's acting so bizarre, and that he's the only one that can get spacecraft up in space reliably. Yeah. Well, he's a bizarre guy. I mean, he's yeah. well, he's autistic, right? This is part of his problem. That's what they say he's on the spectrum somewhere. Yeah. He's, a, he's on the spectrum, but somewhere right. between a uh, human being and an asshole. So <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> he's in the middle. What I I don't, never got that term on the spectrum. What is the spectrum? <laughs> well, has, he's very smart. He's, he's smart, functionally yeah. smart, but they can and be. dysfunctional in a lot of other ways. I don't know. Is that what they mean by on the spectrum, Charlie? Well, on the spectrum, it's it's there's a range of, of yeah. autism. Some yeah, right. very, some you can't yeah. even tell that they're autistic because they're so close to being normal, and yeah, others right. are so bad they can't even interact with people. Yeah, so right. It's, it's a whole range of. That's right. Autistic. Yeah, but with Tony, uh, Tony, you know somebody that's yeah, autistic. Yeah, my sister teaches the Nest program. She's a Nest teacher, and they're on the spectrum. So she sees this. But these kids, Alex, are so intelligent. Oh, 13, like there's one kid, Barack, in the class. He can go into money and currency or how it originated and everything. But you know where they have the problem? She says socially. They oh, can't socially, play. they have no social yeah. skills yeah. at all. And Alex, the kid is like brilliant. He's like, you know, the kid's gonna be a doctor. It's like it's like it's you. like Asperger's disease. It's like wild. They're, it's they're wild. very smart, but they're not yeah. socially. You know, come to think of it, most tech people are that way too. I always thought Asperger's was a euphemism for something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not spelled the I same I got way. burgers Sorry. coming out of my ass. I've got <laughs> ass burgers. Yeah. yeah, the kids are like hardly functional. It's like amazing. How many times have you gone through the class, Tony? I went a couple of times to meet the kids and I was helping my sister set up. So she's, this is my brother and stuff like that. So we were talking. I was like, man, he's, you could just tell by like, boom, it's like how intelligent they are. It's like you could, he was actually correcting my sister on certain words. I was like, holy moly. Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, where where nice somebody thing. has a skill, uh, yeah. but that's the only a lot skill of them they are have. Very good with mathematics. Yeah, yeah but, they, but, like, but but that's the, but they, that, that's the only skill they have. Astrophysics in three weeks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Anyway, so it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to work with uh, work with uh, autistic kids. In fact, she still does. Yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. One of the kids who's in the in the family, mm -hmm. and actually through Pam's family. Yeah. He's uh, got a smarty little guy. He's got an N, uh, PhD, and he does mathematics stuff to solve brand new medical products. Wow. And he, he really works on the math end of it. Yeah. And everybody goes, he's kind of quiet, and this and that. Yeah. And they yeah. say, so what? So <laughs> like, oh, I think well, in, in I think, I think in uh, Elon Musk, we have a very brilliant person there. Oh, yeah. With yeah. social skills problems. But his yeah, social not, skills. Yeah, I can see that exactly, yeah. Is so, he married, Alex? Do you know? I'm oh, sure. he's been married Couple of times, three, he's four got like times. Ten kids. He's got like ten kids. Next in line, Tony is Melania Trump for a marriage <laughs> for him. <laughs> yeah, no, he's had about what? How many kids? Wow. Something like wow. ten a kids, lot. something like yeah, that. Seven or ten or something. Yeah, yeah. And he has no. So social... when you're a billionaire like he is, and one of the richest people in the world, 
Why, why live with the same woman forever? No, I'm saying he has no social skills. How does he get laid? That's what I, I want to know. Say, you dated a lot of women. I'm saying Money. That's how. Because Absolutely. Just like Trump does. You know, you know $130 hook, $130,000 hooker. By the way, I want to bring this up. Uh, are you using some kind of lights tonight, Jeff? Because you're, you look really good. You know, your lighting looks terrific. Can you hear me? At a hotel. We just lost him. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk. Oh, there he is again. Kids oh by three different women. Twelve kids. <laughs> yep. How many has uh, what's his name? The guy that was married to. Uh, oh God, I can't remember. The guy's the black guy's got lots of kids. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, Oh, what's his name? God. Yeah, he was. He was like Clarence well, Thomas. No, no, no. He, no, he, no he's a sports no, player. He was the host of, uh, of America's Got Talent at one time. Yeah. Uh, he was married to uh, the what's her name, the, uh, the black singer with the Christmas song. Uh, yeah. None of you can remember anything tonight. What Every you, singer like, has a Christmas song. Yeah. Everybody. John Denver does. Huh? He's the butt of a joke, but whenever you have a joke about somebody having yeah, a whole bunch only, of Yeah, but he's had like Nick, what, he's, Nick, Nick Cannon. Cannon. Nick Cannon? Cannon. Yeah. That's yeah. Nick Cannon. He's had like 12 <laughs> kids. 15 kids. It, no, I think it's 12. I think it's 12. <laughs> he's got 12, too. Huh? But if, if uh, you know, uh, uh, why do you have that many kids for crying yeah. out loud? What? Sure. You know, it's hard enough to, to take care of. improve your memory, which kids named which? Well, I guess because I'm Jewish, and Jews do not have large families. Nope. I don't know why. Do you have any siblings, Alex? Uh, do, no. 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 He all I have is one sister. My mother had uh, got pregnant, and she was, we, I was going to have a little brother or sister, and then she had a miscarriage. So mm -hmm. that was it. And I went, God, still the only child. I by the wrong name. What? I have three kids, and I call them by the wrong names. How does Elon well, Mar Musk ever keep the names? Yeah, right? Marjorie says to me, well, you know, you, I, you are an only child. You're spoiled and all of that. And I go, <laughs> and your point is, <laughs> you know. It's a good what, thing. You know, it's great being an only you have, child. You have brothers and sisters, Jeff? You're muted, Jeff. You're muted. Yeah. I'm on. There you uh, go. Only my sister. I think there we are. Okay. The three Jews on only two of us only have si an extra sister. Yeah. And Alex has and nobody. Extra. Nobody. Yeah. And I haven't had any kids. So, you know. Well, my next door neighbors are Mexican. They have seven kids. Oh, Jesus. Uh, their kids have kids. They have great grandkids coming over. They have a party. They got. 300 taco eaters out here. You know? <laughs> how, I mean, how in the world? Catholic. Well, let me just ask yeah. you, though. How in the world can you afford to have that many kids? I have no idea. I'm broke with three kids. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I mean, you should not have more kids than you can afford to take care of. Otherwise, yeah, you're just being completely selfish, it, you know? You know? Yep. What are you trying to prove? Yeah. You know, so what the hell? I don't, I don't know. But uh, yeah. anyway, so uh, the world is slightly better and more smiley, and we have a better economy. The, you know, the uh, uh, cost of living is getting a little better, and uh, you know, and we, we've got a, a shot here that Trump isn't going to be president ever again. Okay, and let's just hope it stays that way. And he's going to blow it. He really is. You know, so. Anyway, he there's the thing. should be driving his Corvette every day. What? He should be driving his Corvette every day. Yeah, right, right. Hey, it's been a, it's been another wonderful night in Oz here. Uh, uh, um, what am I, what is, oh, here's some audio coming through. I don't know what it is. We can hear it. Uh, yeah, okay, anyway. That's it for tonight. I appreciate you all being part of this little get together. And uh, uh, Alan, thank you so much for, you know, bringing up the, what causes pink eye and doesn't cause pink eye, and you know how you get rid of it. And I told you, burn it out, burn it out. Yeah. Uh, uh, also, our our good friend uh, 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 Josh, 
very pleasurable to have him here tonight. We didn't, we didn't expect to have him here tonight. Is there something? Is there something on in the background with you, Jeff? I don't know. I, I, there's some kind of sound coming through. I don't know. Yeah. But forget it. It's too late to fix it. Uh, I know. Don't uh, worry. Uh, Charlie. We'll try it tomorrow. Good to see you tonight, and great to have Kevin around. And uh, oh yeah, okay. Good, good for Tony. Thanks, Tony. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And Jeff Stein, I appreciate it. It was well. All of you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight, and we'll have another citizen panel again tomorrow night. There'll be one coming up right now on the intersection with Amy Manuel at um, Skype at uh, GabNet Live. We'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.